Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Ramsey theory, which also includes the concepts of Ramsey's theorem and Ramsey numbers. Also gives rise to what I jokingly call the hardest seemingly simple question in mathematics. And if you stick around to the end, I'll pose that question for you to ponder. So often when people talk about Ramsey theory, you'll hear them talk about things like monochromatic subsets. But I'm choosing to use people as it's a bit simpler and I've imaginatively titled them A, B, C, etc. Now, two people can either be friends or non-friends. And in the case of non-friends, I'm going to call them strangers. So we've only got two cases, friends and strangers. And the next thing is that they're, it's a mutual feeling, a mutual relationship. So if we take any two people, say A and E, we require that if A is a friend of E, then E is a friend of A. If A is a stranger to E, then E is a stranger to A. I'm going to indicate the relationship using a coloured line. If the two people are friends, I'm going to use green for go. And if the two people are strangers, I'm going to use red for stop. Now, Ramsey theory concerns itself with groups of three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. So let's talk about what that looks like. So here we've got three people. We've got green lines between them all. And so we conclude that they're all friends. So we've got three people. They're all friends with each other. And similarly, we can have, if we had three red lines, that would indicate three mutual strangers. Now, the question that we ask as a, for this introduction to, to Ramsey theory is this. What is the smallest number of people so that there must be three mutual friends or three mutual strangers? So let's just take a second to think about this question. The first thing is we've put here or. That's the mathematical or. It does include having both. So you can have both if, if you want. The next thing is uh, we've got the must. So we must have this situation and up the top, the smallest number of people. So let's just start slowly on this. We're looking for the smallest number of people. So let's start with less than three people, zero, one or two people. And here we can see that this statement is, is just can't be right. We can, in fact, we can't have three mutual friends because we don't have three people and we can't have three mutual strangers. So it, it, the answer to this question is clearly not zero, one or two. What about three? Well, I've shown you that we, it's possible to have three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. We saw that in the graphs before. But here's a situation where uh, there's no group of three that are all friends or all strangers. So three's not the answer. So we go to four. So I'm going to do this one for you, but I'd like you to have a go at five. So four, here's a situation where we've got four people and it, we don't have three mutual friends and we don't have three mutual strangers. No matter which three people you pick, they won't be mutual friends and they won't be mutual strangers. So clearly the answer to the question is not four. So we go to five. And here it would be good for you to pause the video, really good for you to pause the video and try yourself to see if you can come up with a situation uh, where we have five people and yet there's no group of three mutual friends nor three mutual strangers. Okay, well, I do this uh, talk live quite a bit or on Skype, and so I need to have some easy to remember way of constructing a situation with five. So what I use is what I call the, the, uh, the dinner party setup. So we put the people around a, a dining room table and people are friends with their immediate neighbors to the left and right. But to the people on the opposite side of the of the uh, table, they're strangers. So we get this shape. And if you look here, you'll see that there's, there's no group of three people here that are either mutual friends or mutual strangers. So clearly the answer to our question is not five. Now it could be six. And in fact, da, 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 it is six. The answer is six. Now, how could we satisfies ourselves that it was six. Well, one way is I could get a computer to go through every possible combination of red and green lines for six people, say, sitting around a table or something like that, and 
check that there's no group of three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. Um, so I could do that. And in fact, you might like to have a think about how hard that would be, which will help you in that little question I'm going to pose right at the end. But the standard way to do it, and this may be useful to you if you're a university student studying this, is that we will prove it. And the way we prove it is what we call proof by contradiction. But before I do that, I just mentioned that I've got more than 60 YouTube videos so on mathematics. Also quite proud of the fact that if you put these entries into YouTube, then uh, my video will come up number one. That, well, that's what I found when I searched through an anonymous proxy recently. So anyway, have a look at some of my videos if you're interested. Okay, so now let's have a look at the proof. Actually, if you don't want to see the proof, I've changed the background color just for the proof so you can skip ahead easily to the end. So what we want to show is that any six people, there must be three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. The way that we do that is we assume the opposite and show there's a contradiction. If you're not, un, if you're not clear about proof by contradiction, you might have, like to have a look at my video, Proofs Made Easy, and then come back here. Okay, so we're going to assume that we have six people and there's no mutual friends, group of three mutual friends, and there's no group of three mutual strangers. So if we have these six people, we can just take one at random. So I've taken C, and if we look at C, what can we say? Well, the number of friends C must have must be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, and we can split it into two cases. Firstly, if, he's, if he or she's got 0, 1, or 2 friends, then we can say he's got less than 3 friends. Otherwise, he or she has got three or more friends. So we'll look at these two cases individually, and I'm going to start with the second one, where C has three or more friends. So we can draw a diagram like this. We've got C, and I've just named his the three friends B, E, and F. He may have more than that, but he's got at least three friends. Um, so I've put the green lines to indicate friends. So now let's look at the relationship between E and F. Now remember we're trying to construct, we're constructing a situation or we're assuming that there's no group of three mutual friends or mutual strangers. So E, F must be strangers, otherwise we would have three mutual friends being E, F and C. Now let's look at B and E. Once again, B and E must be strangers, otherwise we would have three mutual friends. So now let's look at the relationship between B and F. Now on the one hand, uh, B and F can't be friends because then we would have B, F and C being mutual friends. But we can't have B and F being strangers because then B, F and E would be mutual strangers. So there's no way to solve this problem. So in this second case that we talked about where C has three or more friends, it's impossible to, have, um, to avoid having three mutual friends or mutual strangers. So now let's go back to the second case, where C has less than three friends. So if I was to draw the diagram, here it is, instead of the green lines down the bottom here, we would have red lines, and we could repeat exactly the same, well, similar argument. E and F must be friends, B and E must be friends, and now we're stuck when it comes to B and F. So it's impossible to avoid having three mutual friends or three mutual strangers, and that would basically conclude the proof. So welcome back to those that missed the proof. What we showed is that if you have six people, then you must have either three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. So we're now able to answer the question we posed at the start of the video. So here's the question, and the answer is six. So now I just wanted to finish up with what I call the hardest seemingly simple problem in mathematics. So we had this problem, or this question, the answer was six, it took about 10 minutes to explain, and it would require one page to write it up. Now, if we ne then look at requiring that we have four mutual friends or four mutual strangers rather than the three, well, it turns out that the answer to that is 18. It's a little bit harder to, to prove what you need to prove, but it would take about half an hour to explain it require about two pages to write it up. So now what about when we go to five? Five mutual friends or five mutual strangers? Well, can't be that hard, can it? Well, it turns out the answer is, well, we don't know. 
mathematicians don't know the answer to this question. Even though 3 and 4 are fairly straightforward, though a little bit difficult, for 5 we can't work it out. We know, what do we know? Well, we know that the answer is between 43 and 48 inclusive. That's all we know. So that's why I call it the hardest seemingly simple problem in mathematics. That's all I wanted to say about Ramsey theory. I hope this has been a good introduction for you to this really beautiful area of combinatorics in mathematics.